Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Monday morning, about 11.45, and I'm heading over to the hospital, Bummer and Grad. I did my annual dermatology appointment uh, check over. I hadn't had one in probably two and a half years, and she might be a little aggressive, but I kind of trusted her because she pointed out 20 little moles and whatnot spots on my body. She says, that's nothing, that's nothing, that's nothing. These five, let's just go ahead and freeze off for cosmetic sake, little skin tag, whatever. Now, I did have two spots where she is 99 point sure one of them is a, a basil. So she wants to take that off and put it under the microscope. The other one, she said it's kind of 50-50 if it's basil. I'm not, I probably should have asked a few more questions. She started talking about a laser which is newer technology than breaking out the scalpel and uh, ending up with 10 stitches. I am getting on a plane in four days, so I'm not really interested in uh, the sight of my knee being out of commission. Again, I should have asked maybe a few more questions. Um, I just saw the laser, and I remember hearing that that's a little more non-evasive, so I'm not sure what she's doing. I know she's freezing a couple of things, but if... The one procedure which she was 99.9% sure it was cancerous. Um, if that's the procedure where you cut, put it under a microscope, cut a little bit more, and then uh, kind of flap the skin over and put 10 or 15 stitches, I might hold off on that until after my little trip. I mean, I've had that spot there for, for three years, so I know it needs to be taken care of, but probably uh, five more days won't hurt. So let's go head over to dermatology, see what she's gonna do, and uh, maybe I'll get lucky. I just got my monthly power bill. It bounces between a whopping, today it was 54 baht. Sometimes it's high as uh, 56 baht. Now my air conditioning, or my power bill, that's a major bill for me. Compared to a lot of my buddies, I've said it before, and I, it must be how old your units are, the air conditioning units, I have them I've had them serviced twice within the past 12 months. One of them needed gas. It just wasn't as cold as the other. They put some Freon or whatever they put in it, and uh, it's been ice cold, and it's remained that way for maybe six months. However, I think my machines are from 2004 or whenever this building was built, and they're probably just not running at peak efficiency no matter how well you have them serviced because... Running one air conditioner, if that's in the bedroom or in the living room, and then blowing the air with a fan into the bedroom. I only run one at a time while I'm in the apartment, so let's call it 12, 15 hours a day, sometimes more, sometimes less. My power bill is uh, over 3,000 baht. Last month, I believe it was 3,400. And I talked to my different buddies, and they're like, hey, man, I run my air AC like 20 hours a day, and my power bill is... Uh, 1500 baht and that's the same experience I had up in on newt now those were less than five-year-old machines So maybe just older machines are gonna Run a little worse power efficient wise. We'll see what the bill is this month because I was out of town 10 or 11 days and Surprisingly I was out of town seven or eight days one month and it was still like a 3,000 baht bill so who knows I'm Supposedly paying the government rate. There's a meter in the hallway that I've heard them out there looking at the meter. I, you would think there would be a more, I don't know, electronic way of doing it. But I think they actually look at your, well, maybe that's the water meter. So I'm not exactly sure. But I'll let you know what the power bill is just for uh, whatever you want to call it. So you know what's going on. You can maybe uh, factor in what your power bill might be. The best advice I could say is if you're torn between two condos, whichever has the newer ACs, and in an older building like mine, I'll often, well, older, it's 2005, I guess that's older by Bangkok's sake, and California, that'd be a brand new building. Sometimes I'll see the two ACs that I have out front, and they're putting in two brand new units. Now, those obviously conked out, or maybe somebody just wanted an upgrade, but if you can find a unit in an older building with brand new ACs, that might be the sweet spot. 
And here's one of the more popular streets in central Bangkok, so we've got Soy 24. Head up the way, you'll find the Marriott service departments, the Hyatt Place, all kinds of fancy condos. The Hilton's just a short way up on the left. And I made my way up to Nana. My hospital's in between Soy 1 and 3, kind of directly across the street from Nana Plaza in that area. But it's noon. My appointment's at uh, 2. I always like to be early just in case they get me in. I'm going to go get some noodles, hang out. I'm not really too worried about this. I, I've been doing a little bit of research online. It's like one in five or six people over 50 has different uh, forms of skin cancer. Yeah, most of them they're easily treated. I think it's the melanoma. They, it's a little more complicated and spreads faster. So I'm going to let her do her thing. Once again, I'm going to talk with her about how much cutting she expects to do on this this one little area and yeah if it's gonna put me out of commission or have me limping around for a week 10 days i might ask her to put that off until next week and let's just take care of the light stuff today again i should have maybe asked these questions earlier but when she said i'm fairly certain that is skin cancer my you know reaction was okay how soon you know can we schedule to have it removed i didn't even really remember i had this plane ticket and of course any trip is less important than uh, your health but i think this is something that uh, a couple of days isn't going to make a difference and i carried mail most of my life i probably wasn't as good at sunscreen as i should have been i always wear like a lifeguard hat and uh yeah, I smeared some sunscreen on my nose and the top of my ears, but arms, legs, not so much. And that's what I have going. It's just a little, I'll show you. It's just a little thing. But as they say, keep an eye on uh, changing colors, changing sizes. And that thing has pretty much stayed the same for 20, 25 years. Again, she might be a little aggressive i've had other dermatologists over the past whatever two decades i've always pointed that out and they're like yeah that's really nothing just let us know if it changes but if it's not too invasive i'm just gonna have her remove it and not even have to deal with it this thing on my back shoulder it is a getting to be about a half a dime size uh flat spot and that is the one she said i'm 99.9 percent .9%, so for whatever reason, I think she said she was going to laser that one. So we'll see how it goes. Here's the popular Soy 8. I'm going to head over to Buddy's, get some Thai food. And there's Buddy's Bar and Grill. It's going to cost me, I don't know, 70 baht more than eating out on the street. But it's a big, delicious portion. Sitting in some nice air conditioning, sometimes it's just worth paying the extra $1.50. Oh, it's nice and ice cold in here. Buddy's is a great spot for affordable bottles of beer i want to say 80 or 90 90 baht is the normal price and that's a little unusual in bangkok now i'm not having any beers before i head into surgery i'm just putting that out there i usually head over to the buddies on soy 22 but the one on soy 8 there's one at the top of soy 20 there's one down in on nude i think around soy 85 and one in salome i've never been to they're great little bars I guess American based. You always find hockey, football, baseball on the TVs. And you know, I just looked at the menu. I was curious as to what Guinness cost. I think it's two sixty-five a pint, and I was a little off on the bottles. They are ninety-five baht for most domestics and San Miguel Light. That's still pretty affordable. One forty. Luck. You're lucky if you find one twenty. Uh, everyday price around town. And I'm sorry, I was a little distracted. Two sixty on the pint of Guinness. I'm not sure if I said that correct. I think somebody told me they were paying 340 at another Irish bar in town. I haven't had a Guinness in 10 or 15 years, so I'm not sure. And I pointed it out before, I don't uh, dip, but they have Swedish snus, snus they call it, or I call it dip or snuff, but it's snus. If you're looking for your skull fix i don't think you're going to find that here but these different uh swedish tens all the buddies locations seem to have them and i didn't even know they had thai snuff i don't see it at the 7-eleven of course i'm not asking or looking for it 
but she just told me the Swedish is 350 for one of those round little containers and the Thai is 300. So factor that into your dip budget. And whenever I hear this song, it reminds me of San Diego, uh, Eagles tune, but Jap Temkin, Temkin actually wrote it. He's from San Diego and you'll, uh, he might have recently passed, but I've seen him maybe 20 times, especially up in the Lucadia, Solana Beach area. He must live up there playing different little coffee houses and all. Yeah, he'll break out peaceful, easy feeling. I'm sure he probably sold it to the Eagles for a hundred bucks or I maybe he still owns it. I'm not sure. Hopefully, that's a, a nice song. And I just did a two minute search on the song. It, it didn't say he sold the song. It said he was living in Jackson Brown's house. He is from San Diego and, and Jackson Brown invited him up to LA trying to get him in the music scene. He was playing the song for Jackson Brown and Glenn Fry heard it and said, hey, my new band, the Eagles, were eight days old. Do you mind if we uh, work, work on that song? And he said, yeah, absolutely. So I don't know if he sold it to him. Hopefully, he still has the publishing rights. I mean, just that one song alone. I have another buddy in San Diego who wrote Jewel's song, uh, You Were Made For Me. And I know he still gets publishing rights on that. So every time she sings it in a show or anybody sings it, he gets a little piece, which is how it should be. Oh, and that buddy was Steve Poltz. I, I, I'm not super close with the guy. I haven't. It's just bumping into him at different music shows. But I heard he uh, moved to Nashville. All right, I got a belly full of noodles. I ended up getting the pad thai. Pad thai and I got a soda. I probably should have had a bottle of water, but I don't know. I guess I'm a little bit nervous every time you go in for a little procedure. So a little sugar couldn't hurt. And the whole bill was uh, 280 baht. So again, you're paying more than street food price, but it's a nice air-conditioned little restaurant. This is looking across the way. I'm on Soy 8, and directly across the street is Soy 11, kind of the go-to party street. If you're looking for nightclubs and all those kind of things down the way, is it Candy Crush, or maybe there's both and a couple of uh, three or four rooftop bars. If you go to the end of the street where it makes a left, there's a Via Market and right across from that is a new club. I know the owner, well, I've spoke to him three or four times. I'm forgetting his name. I know he's from Santa Cruz. The Golden Giraffe. They have live music downstairs and a fancy cocktail bar upstairs, kind of a speakeasy. I believe it goes till six in the morning. Don't quote me on that, but I think it does. And lost my train of thought there with the horn. Um, there's also Havana Social Club down there by Golden Giraffe. That's another popular, uh, I won't, I guess I'll call it a nightclub, but it's just a little two story. Havana Social. 100% of the time I go up and over the train to get to the other side of Sukhumvit. For whatever reason, they don't have a fence up. Well, the reason is, uh, well, no, this little section right here. Sokovet has kind of a permanent fence and signs everywhere that say 2,000 baht fine for crossing the road. But for whatever reason here, people do it all the time. Now, she's a local, but if you're a tourist, especially after you've had uh, six or eight beers, just don't do it. Take the extra two minutes and go up and over the train. This running across Sokovet, it's, it's just a recipe for disaster. There's motorbikes going the wrong way. It's a little chaotic. Just don't do it. The cars don't expect you to come running across. So if you're going to get uh, tapped or whacked, it could be right here. And here in Nana, anyhow, like many of the BTS stations, they have an escalator at least at uh, one of the four entrances to get up. On the other side, you have to take a set of stairs, but it's certainly safer. And I made my way up to Soy 7 slash 1 directly under the Nana BTS. You head up this crazy little soy. There are a bunch of little beer bars, but up on the right is the green room bar. Great place for music. It's closed on Monday. Every other night of the week, uh, 7, 30, 8 o'clock, bands go till 1 or 2. Watch the motorbikes on the uh, sideway. You can get mad about it or just understand it's going to happen and be prepared. I personally never had a problem with the uh, the bikes on the sidewalk, but if you're one of these guys that likes to 
take up eight feet of real estate kind of zigzagging across the sidewalk, you might step right in front of a bike that's starting to uh, pass you from behind. So walk to one side of the sidewalk and walk in a straight line. You won't have a problem. And there's one of the smarter dogs in Thailand. Every time that 7-Eleven door opens, he gets a blast of air conditioning. Looks like he has a smile on his face. And here's Soy 5. They have a 24-hour food land just up the way. I'm going to duck in there and get a bottle of Tylenol. I'm not sure uh, if I'm going to be aching or not. You can get like six tablets of Tylenol at the 7-Eleven. But I'll just throw a bottle in the uh, medicine kit. I'll also point out my favorite little Middle Eastern food spot. They make the bread homemade in a brick oven. It's delicious, right near the food land. There it is right here, Hafid. Hafid Restaurant and Cafe. At the bottom of the Grand Five Hotel, right next to the food land. And they have the shawarma going in the evening. Really good. But I'm surprised he isn't... Uh, every time I walk by, he's uh, baking bread. Maybe he starts a little later in the afternoon. It's going on one. And here's the food land and the lunch counter very popular lunch counter. There's a 139, 109 baht breakfast. All right, I got my Tylenol on hand. I am gonna cut through what is affectionately known as Little Arabia here, Soy 5. Take a little shortcut to go over to, I think it's Soy 3 and a half, and then I'll pop out on 3, cross over at the hospital, Bumrungrad's in between Soy 3 and Soy 1 in the Nana area. And a shout out to my buddy Andy from the UK. He likes his Gulliver's on Soy 5. I think it's really the only bar in the area. This is a, a more Muslim area. There's a hundred little coffee and, and tea shops. And that's looking in the opposite direction, Sukhumvit at the end. But as you're going up Soy 5, this little shortcut will take you over to Soy 3. A bunch of little Middle Eastern restaurants and uh, barber shops. Names like the Bangkok Sahara Hotel, there's the Dubai Hotel, the Iraqi Hotel. Definitely a little slice of the Middle East. But that uh, bread at Hafid's is amazing. Otherwise, not too many British or Irish pubs in this area for, for me to hang out. You'll see people from all over the world. The same could be said uh, about Bumrengrad. I, I don't know if it's, uh, well, it's a world-class hospital. So I think people travel from all over the area, including the Middle East, for affordable top-notch healthcare. Even this procedure, well, several procedures I'm having today, but uh, call it minor surgery, just a bunch of little things and pathology, was a 28,000 baht cash price, or 770 US dollars. Uh, luckily, I have insurance, so it's $150 for outpatient surgery. But you can see it's affordable if uh, you're going to pay cash. I certainly wouldn't recommend that. I mean, this is small potatoes. If uh, diabetes treatment or, or continuous cancer treatment, major, major surgery, yeah, that can get very expensive very fast. But these more minor things, they're hundreds of dollars compared to tens of thousands of dollars probably for what I'm having done in the United States. They have the Dino Bar at the Grace Hotel, the first Arabic disco. I believe that's the Grace. No, I'm sorry. The Grace is actually on Soy 5, but you can uh, enter it from Soy 3 as well. And this barbed wire wall on the left is for the Embassy of Pakistan. And just feet past the Embassy at the 3 Sukhumvit Hotel, you'll take this left. And that's where Bumgrad is. Right there is the hospital. Three towers, A, B, and C. If you're not feeling well, twisted your ankle, whatever the case might be, head into the B building, into the lobby. I guess you can do it in the A building. That's where the emergency room is. But head into the B, explain your situation. And it's a little more specialized here. If uh, you have a terrible sore throat, she's going to send you to the ear, nose, and throat doctor, not just a general urgent care situation. If you're feeling you might be having a heart attack, they're sending you to cardiology. But start in the lobby of the B building, and they'll tell you where to go. Little pro tip, the front area is crazy busy with cars doing valet parking and just the different parking lots. 
Walk out to the Soy One side. It's much less busy if you're gonna order a grab or there's taxis standing by. If you order a grab to pick you up at Bumengrad, I'm assuming they're gonna pick you up here at the lobby and you might be waiting 15 minutes for that car to move the 30 feet to come up to the lobby door to pick you up. So just go out the, the back way, the Soy One side, and it's just way less busy. You can see it's a busy hospital and just like a, a nice hotel, it's a little funny. They park the uh, Maseratis and Porsche. They just they park them out front. So all the valet area over there, it's uh, high-end super sport cars. And I can see that's a Ferrari. So save the comment, car guy. I know the difference between a Maserati and a Ferrari some of the time. And like I mentioned, I'm heading to the C building. That's where you'll find the skin clinic up on the eighth floor. So I've made a couple of videos on healthcare and dental here in Bangkok. You can check out that playlist. It's called... Um, mistakes I've made, things I've did correct, and healthcare. I've explained a few different times, maybe too many times, but if you're interested in how your U.S. healthcare might work here in Thailand, if it works at all. I'm lucky I have Federal Blue Cross. It does work abroad. I had another buddy who said, well, I have Blue Cross through the city of Cleveland, I think, and it does not work abroad. You need GeoBlue for that. Well, GeoBlue was attached to my policy. So check with your provider if going into retirement, it is going to work over here. In my case, it does. But the rules keep changing. It used to be you did not need a guarantee of benefit. You just needed to be registered with the hospital. You showed up, you paid 30% of the cash bill, and they sorted everything out later. Now, GeoBlue change providers, I don't know, billing, whatever they do. Today, if you don't have a GOB, you pay the entire cash price here at the hospital. In my case today, it's like 800 bucks. I do have a GOB. That's why I'm here five days later. I just, sometimes you can get it in 10 minutes, sometimes 24 hours. I scheduled it five days later, and I might even reschedule it again if she says I'm going to be out for 10 days or limping or whatever it is. I, I might put off the one little part of it. But anyhow, I have the GOB in effect. I went up to the billing counter right now and they said, yes, your copay is 150 US or 5,000 and whatever bot is $150 and I'm good to go. And as you can see, it's a very professional setup. So I just left the hospital, everything went smooth. She did two biopsies, um, one near my knee and one on my shoulder. I asked her what she suspected and she says, I'm not sure. We have to put it under a microscope. I can't tell if it's a, a basal cell or is it squamos, the other type? She goes, I'm pretty sure it's not melanoma, but you'll never know. Uh, we need to put it under a microscope. She says, five to seven days, we'll shoot you the results. She goes, one of them, I'm pretty sure 99% is cancerous. The other one, I'm 50-50. I think I already mentioned that. Anyhow, she says the pathology will tell us exactly what it is and then we go from there on how to treat it. She said we could laser, oftentimes uh, cut. That will be done in plastic surgery, not in her office. But again, she says, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's see what it even is and uh, just keep it simple. Other things, I was surprised she ended up freezing Five little spots kind of at my hairline on my face. Now those are gonna get a little nasty, probably turn red. Uh, other things I've had froze off in the past, like little skin tags and all. They just kind of dry up, turn black and fall off. But she goes, that is definitely precancerous on your face. And yeah, I've did a lot of a lot of time on sailboats and, and carrying mail and all and, and even wearing a lifeguard hat, floppy hat, whatever. Uh, I'm sure I've did a lot of uh, damage over the years, not being judicial, wearing sunscreen and putting it on two and three times a day. I'll, I'll put it on when I hit the street delivering mail, and, that, and that's probably it, and I probably didn't do that half the time. So now at age uh, 57, almost 58, I'm paying the price, but it's fairly common. Again, one in six people is going to have some form of skin cancer past 50, according to Google. So... I am at least doing my best to stay ahead of things before things start spreading and getting carried away. 
but we'll go from there. Once again, Bumragrad, it seems like they treated me well. If you've never, if you've never did this type of procedure, she just did a, a small local uh, needle at each place. I mean, she says, okay, here comes the needle. And then five seconds later, she was shaving off what was going under the microscope and I did, I did not feel a thing. Uh, she did remove a mole. Maybe a little bit more cosmetic. She did me a favor. It's on the, it was, it's gone now, on the back of my head in the hairline. And it was just one of those tiny little moles that was annoying. When I'd get a haircut, they're always dragging a comb through your hair. And, and you know, I'd have to point out, hey, I got that little mole back there. Please don't rip it off. And uh, half the time, they'd still kind of get me. So it's, it's nice to have that gone. Now, not to get graphic or anything she did that with a laser which is possibly the treatment once they find out what's going on with these other two spots she's more concerned about and that was kind of a little nasty it uh, definitely smelled like uh, burning flesh uh, again she put the needle back there so I did not feel a thing but it took I don't know five minutes of her kind of burning away and then she was inspecting it. I, I was uh, face down with gauze on my eyes because of the laser. That's what she told me. But I could kind of sense what was going on. She was putting a big, whatever it is, magnifying glass to my head. And again, not a big deal. I mean, a laser burning away anything on the body is going to cause a little bit of smoke and smell. But it's way better than still having it there line is I'm glad I got in there and, and got it checked out. My insurance anyhow pays for uh, no copay uh, annual dermatology screening. I did just pay $150 copay for the outpatient procedure. I'm kind of repeating myself. Uh, it's, it's a little hot and uh, it's been a long day. So forgive me. But I think the whole process was about $800 US. My copay was $150 the same copay it would have been if this was an $8,000 procedure in San Diego. So once again, your insurance follows you. If you have $150 copay US, it's gonna be $150 here. And I'm, and I'm talking in US dollars, not in Thai bot, just to keep things simple. I know a lot of people that watch my channel uh, have not yet moved over here and they understand what 150 is and maybe even people from Australia, the UK, they can quickly uh, change 150 US to uh, British pound or Australian dollar, Canadian money. So I just speak in dollars. Yes, I don't speak in dollars living in Thailand, but I try to keep it simple on the channel. Oh, and I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you were uh, calling a grab car, Bolt, don't do it on the Soy 3 side. This is Soy 1. You can see it's a, a much easier way to uh, get a car plus there's a motorbike stand down at the hospital I think it's just 10 baht they'll race you up to Sukhumvit and then you're actually closer to the Plone Chip BTS than Nana and that is the Wachara Muay Thai gym and most of the Muay Thai gyms I see around town are outside just another another level of uh, hardcore this one appears to be air conditioned but air conditioned or not I'm sure it's going to be an intense workout and as you're coming up Soy 1 to Sukhumvit, there's a couple little barber shops, a bunch of little massage places, and there's a cobbler if you need your shoes repaired right on the corner. And there's even a, a clock shop. It says repair old watches, but I see a lot of uh, old clocks happening. And there's the cobbler uh, on on jacket and shoes, custom made, all type of leather goods and products, 24 hour delivery. This is looking down from Soy 1, so I am going to go in the opposite direction and go over to uh, Plon Chit. Just a short distance up from Plon Chit is uh, Wireless Road and all the embassies including the U.S. Embassy. Be a little careful here. There is a walk, don't walk light, but everybody is rushing up the toll road and there's also an entrance to the toll road. Plon Chit BTS. I pointed it out before but this might be the first video you're watching right below the Plone Chip BTS you'll find Siam Pharmacy um, my doctor told me yeah don't fill your prescription here at the hospital 
I'll write you a separate prescription and bring it over to Siam. And yeah, it did save me whatever it was, eight bucks. I'm not a huge prescription guy. If you're taking multiple things, the way they do it at Bumrengrad, I don't know about other hospitals, I assume they do it the same way, is the doctor orders XYZ medicine, they just tack it onto the bill, you pay the bill, then walk over to the pharmacy and off you go. And if you're paying cash, or even in my case, I pay 50% of medicine. So if the medicine's 100 bucks, I pay 50 bucks. Well, if I come over here to Siam, the medicine might be $80, and I'm in them responsible. I'm then going to pay the 40 bucks. Sorry, it's getting hot. I'm uh, mumbling here a little. Uh, the only catch is I'll have to pay the entire 80 bucks and then submit for to get the 40 back to my insurance company. It, that's probably not going to be worth it. But if you are taking some whatever medicine and you know it's super expensive, maybe you've did the math and. It's 300 bucks for a month's supply at the hospital, and it's $200 here. And especially if you're paying cash, we'll definitely get that separate prescription. And it's not a little 4x4 four four note like in the U.S. on a prescription pad. It's the doctor's medical certificate, which some insur insurance companies also want. Bumrengrad is an in-network hospital with my U.S. insurance, so they don't really require the medical certificate. However, I went to the doctor in Bali, Indonesia, and they're not in network. I needed the bill, which I already had to pay, and the medical certificate sent to the insurance company to get reimbursed. So in the case of uh, getting reimbursed at, say, this Siam Pharmacy, I'm pretty sure you're going to have to have that medical certificate. They seem to give me one every time. It's just kind of standard expat practice. But just keep that in mind. And also down this little street here, this little side soy next to Siam Pharmacy, you'll find Billy's Smokehouse. Really good barbecue. I think he's from Northern California. I know he has a Stone IPA on tap if you want to give that a try. It's not super cheap. I was talking to one of his waitresses, and she told me in Thai Bot, I did a quick math, and it was... 260 bucks for a half a keg just one of those little tiny they look like a coca-cola keg anyhow so i can see why they might have to charge uh, a little over 300 baht for a pint and there's some window washers hard at work they're only on the whatever that is 10th floor there but i've seen them banging on my window up on the uh, uh 26th floor not a fun job and this is looking down the tracks. The next station is Chitlom and Central World Mall off to the right. Then you continue on, you'll be at Siam Paragon Mall at the Siam Central Station. And she's working very hard uh, polishing every inch of her BTS station. The crime is a problem at all in Bangkok, but there is a guard on both sides of the station the entire time the train is open. They're also here to assist uh, sight-impaired people. I'm sure anybody that needs assistance, but I'll see them leading a blind person up to the front car, and uh, they're all on the radio. So wherever that person is going, the next guard is waiting at that front car to escort that customer down to the street. And just some simple uh, train etiquette. You'll see the... Uh, Stay out of the way. This is where people get off the train. Stay to one side. And they'll make announcements on the train. Please take your backpack off. Uh, these trains will get packed. So an average sized person with a, another one foot of backpack sticking off their back, that's not cool on the train. Take it off and carry it. Hey, so there you go. I'm back in Prom Pong. I'm, uh, I'm glad I got this done. I, I knew I had to get to dermatology. It had been a while. You're supposed to get checked out every year. I'm probably at the two and a half year mark and it's just roasting hot over here. Not that I came up with any of these issues probably in the last year or so. I'm sure they've been there for 10 years, but whatever. Go get checked out. Take care of the small stuff before it turns into a major expense or more importantly, a major health problem. I'm not here to preach to anyone, but there's just no excuse to uh, not get physicals and blood work and you don't want to wait till you're feeling crummy and uh, 
you found out you've had cancer in you for the past couple of years. Take care of those things early. All right, hey, so take it easy. More videos to come, and I will see you later.